Eyesight is an amazing thing. Our eyes don't work the way we usually think they do. Just because we can direct them in different directions or we can go cross-eyed. It doesn't mean we can actually make them focus and if we try to make them focus we generally find we just make them more out of focus because in fact the way they work is not by direct control at all. To William Horatio Bates. Bates' method is a system of techniques for improving your eyesight without needing to use lenses to help with the focus. And in this video I'm going to try and demonstrate to you some of the main ways of doing this. People tend to think, oh, it's all about eye exercises. It's about if I do this or something, some particular routine every day, day after day for X number of minutes, I'll end up improving my eyesight. And Bates' method is not really about the mechanics that you see from the outside. For example, if I demonstrate for you now one of the techniques of Bates' method, the long swing, Well, okay, did you have any idea what that was about? You could see what I was doing, but you couldn't actually do what I was doing because what I was doing was experiencing something inside my head, in my visual cortex, which is where seeing actually takes place and not in the eyes. And so Bates' techniques are really about getting away from this whole idea of fixating on your eyeballs and what they're doing and um, whether the print is in focus and trying to get it into focus getting away from all that and really centering yourself on what you are experiencing in your consciousness. Not trying to change it, just experiencing it. From Dr. Bates's point of view, any effort to try and get something into focus when it's out of focus causes strain. And strain is the worst thing for the eyes because it just increases the blur. Now if I try really hard to get something into focus you can see that my eyes become very still. All the muscles around my eyeballs tense up with the effort. And this prevents them from adjusting in the normal natural way. So when I'm doing this long swing, what I'm thinking about is not trying to get anything into focus, not trying to see anything, not trying to make anything happen, but just to experience the movement in the visual field which is induced by moving my head around. In fact, what I'm doing is panning in quite a similar way to the way a camera works. So here's my swing. Not terribly exciting scenery in the bedroom, but you can see that objects are moving through the visual field. As I move from left to right, they're moving from right to left. And as I move back from right to left, they move from left to right. And then if you notice, I closed my eyes and I carried on doing this swing with my eyes closed. And what I was doing then 
was remembering this sensation of movement that I was getting, and this was activating my imagination, which Dr Bates pointed out is very important in the art of seeing well. So now here's what happens to those still staring eyes. When I let my eyes go, and I just think about the movement as I swing around the room. Now I'm not deliberately making my eyes do anything, they're doing this of their own accord. And they're doing what they need to do in order to function well and to focus well. And practicing the swing encourages them to do this. Just by thinking about the movement. OK, so it looks a bit weird and it looks even weirder in the close-up. But the point about this is to demonstrate that the eyeballs can move and they can move fairly quickly. And if you leave them to their own devices, they do move. When you're in the habit of staring, then you inhibit these movements. And the long swing is designed to help you to allow the movements to come back of their own accord. So as I'm moving, as I'm swinging around, I'm enjoying a smooth, relaxing movement. And I'm noticing that things are moving through my visual field. There's a constantly changing panorama there. And then I'm remembering that movement, that sweep of things, light and dark, first one way, then the other. And remembering reinforces the experience and the experience then carries over into everyday life. Wow, I'm seeing more clearly already. <laughs> if I'm finding it hard to get a sense of movement, I can point with my finger and then as soon as I start to swing, I can watch everything sliding along behind where my finger's pointing. And in fact, the sense of movement is very much greater at that point. And then I can pretend that that pointer is there still and just focus my attention on the point where it will be touching the scenery. I can begin to imagine that it's, rather than a finger, it's a kind of extension of my nose. And wherever my nose points, it extends indefinitely until it touches a colour. And so what I'm doing when I'm swinging is stroking this extensible imaginary pointer over all these different patches of colour. <laughs> 